Welcome to part two of the Everlast PowerTig 255 EXT tutorial. The digital PowerTig 255 EXT is the most advanced AC-DC welder Everlast has offered to date. The operator input and machine output are precisely managed by the durable microprocessor inside the unit. This video will cover the AC features of waveform, frequency, and balance. It will also cover pulse and advanced pulse operation and adjustment. We'll cover stick features of arc force and hot start. The AC TIG features of the welder includes a choice of four AC waveforms. The advanced square wave, which is the unit's default mode, is the standard mode of choice for all purpose use. It offers fast wet end of the puddle and a precise directional arc. The triangular wave is a good feature for use while welding thin materials. It offers a controllable puddle at a rapid rate of travel, helping to reduce overall distortion. The soft square wave is similar to a transformer welder square wave and offers a softer arc but still retains controllability over a standard sine wave. The sine wave offers the softest feel and mimics the feel of older transformer welders. This is good for flat surface welding on thicker materials. The AC balance adjusts the cleaning action of the welder. This is listed as a percent of electrode positive. At the time of the video production, the units are scheduled to go as low as 5% up to 90% positive polarity. AC frequency helps to focus and narrow the AC arc for precise control and penetration. The standard pulse can be used with AC or DC modes and reduces overall heat input of the weld while maintaining good penetration. In AC mode, the advanced square wave offers a pulse up to 250 Hz. In all other waveforms, it offers up to 10 Hz, which is still an ideal range for manual welding. DC range is up to 500 Hz. The Advanced AC Pulse Mode is designed specifically for welding aluminum. It features a pulse mode that oscillates between AC and DC negative polarity. This improves control of the weld puddle and reduces etching, especially on thinner materials. The puddle tends to stand up more and freezes rapidly. The pulse range is up to 10 Hz in all waveforms. The stick function offers up to 225 amps of welding power with a 60% duty cycle. The arc force control feature controls the dig of the arc and helps prevent sticking in short arc situations. Hot start duration and hot start intensity adjustments improve arc initiation. This is accomplished by raising the amps temporarily to prevent sticking of the electrode while the arc is being struck. The unit also features a standard voltage mode and a voltage reduction device mode to improve operator safety and accommodate job site requirements where a VRD is required. When AC mode is selected, the unit allows access to the AC section of the graph indicated in green. The first is the AC balance. This is a percent of positive polarity. Note that this is a reciprocal value from some other well-known brands. A good starting point is 35%. Anything over 45% may cause undesirable balling. Next to be adjusted is AC frequency. For a good starting point, adjust frequency to 100 to 120 Hz and fine tune from there. To adjust the waveform, the unit must be in AC. Use the selector to scroll through the waveforms to select the desired operation. The machine scrolls left to right with the default waveform, the advanced square wave on the left. Second is the soft square wave. Third, the triangular wave and on the far right is the sine wave. Next, the unit will scroll to DC output. Here, as the unit has been cycled into the advanced pulse mode, all waveforms can be selected except for DC. To pulse in DC, the unit must be in standard pulse mode. All AC waveforms can be used in standard pulse mode as well. After pulse mode is selected, the unit allows access to the yellow pulse section. The peak amps are also considered the welding amps for pulse purposes. Next is pulse time on. This adjusts the relative amount of time the pulse is in the low amperage phase of the pulse. A good starting point for this feature is somewhere around 50%. The next adjustment is the pulse amp adjustment. This is expressed as a percent of welding amps. This is actually the low phase of the pulse. A good setting for this is somewhere around 50%. The last pulse adjustment is the pulse frequency. This reflects the number of pulses per second. The pulse frequency adjustment depends upon the desired effect. On the low side of the pulse, it can be used to time the adding of the filler rod. 
On the higher side of the pulse, the pulse serves to focus the arc and control the overall heat input. The advanced pulse is similar. The only difference is the pulse is composed of both AC and DC negative polarity. The AC side is assigned to the welding amps and the DC negative part of the pulse is assigned to the pulse amps. This means that the AC part of the pulse is actually the peak part of the pulse and the DC part of the pulse is the low amp phase of the pulse. Due to its nature, the pulse is limited to 10 Hz. When the unit is used in the stick mode, the default is to display welding amps. Note that there is no light lit up on the main graph section. When the selector button is pressed once, the arc force indicator will come on. This setting is sometimes referred to as DIG. It can be adjusted from 0 to 100% of the available arc force. The next setting is hot start time. This setting adjusts the length of time the hot start is engaged while striking an arc. The final adjustment in stick mode is the hot start amps. This actually sets the amount of extra amperage used to strike the initial arc. After the hot start time is completed, the welder will resume normal welding. This completes our tutorial on the Everlast PowerTIG 255 EXT. Be sure to view the video demonstrations with the PowerTIG 255 EXT that follow. If you have any questions about this welder or any Everlast product, please give us a call at the number listed above. Thanks for watching.